documentary, they talk about dolphin meat because it's it's such a big fish. The meat is mammal. so full of mercury, right? It's oh well, yeah, it's actually a mammal. Um, but because it's such a big animal, its meat is full of toxic levels of mercury, so it's right. not even good for you to eat, right? Wow. Well, you know, I mean, generally after that movie and ta- you know, I've met some of the experts and what I've learned is kind of, you don't really want to eat fish that are bigger than your plate because right. the bigger the fish is, the more, the higher it is on the food chain, the higher in the food chain, it's eating things that are eating other things that are eating other things. Right. And so the levels of toxicity build up. And then when you have dolphins that can live 20, 30, 40 years and they're big, the levels build up in, immensely. And then when you have whales, it's even more so. And, you know, with the dolphin meat, we were finding levels that were 2,000 times the legal limit. And so, and Taiji also has a mortality rate 50% higher than any village of its size. So there's something going on in Taiji, like clearly. And it's and not in it's any not, other city. And it, mercury poisoning is not something that, like, you wake up one day like, <clears throat> I'm sick. Like, it's degenerative. So what happens is it's like changing the neurons in your brain and it's changing who you are as a person slowly. So you don't notice the changes, but you're slowly becoming this other person and like your hearing goes out, you're yelling and like things like that happen that you don't really notice. And so it's hard, you know, they haven't really done the testing that they need to do there because clearly something's going on. And didn't at one point somebody say to the people of Taiji, to the fishermen in, in uh, particular, "Let hey, we'll give you, all, we'll pay you all the money that you're making slaughtering these dolphins if you'll just consider s- stop this killing and stopping the fishing of these dolphins." And they refused it because they said it was a, a part of their their culture that they didn't want to give up, or it was something. No matter what you hit them with, they come with some other reason. So it's like. You know, it's not about, you know, it's, it's, I've heard the reason it's pest control. Right. Like there are no more fish in the ocean because the dolphins ate them all. Like they've put up charts before where they're like literally saying the dolphins and whales are eating all the fish. Therefore our fishing is clearly the overfishing that's causing there's no fish, not the right. dolphins and whales. So they say it's pest control. They say, you know, there are dolphins and fish. There's no difference between the two. So what's the big deal? You know, you guys eat uh, pigs and chickens and cows. And um, there's every reason. So, so and, you, know, you know, but the, what happens with the mercury issue? And, and so we hammer on it. For us, it, it, we, we, when we're there, we try to portray this not as, it's not an animal rights issue. We're not like, oh, they're do- cute dolphins. You need to save them. We were like, They're full of toxic mercury. These people are eating them. When we first got there, eating dolphin meat was compulsory in the school systems. Like it's no longer like that anymore, but they were forcing the kids to eat dolphin meat because they were trying to make them dolphin eat. So there'd be a a pipeline that when they get older, they'll still buy dolphin meat. Like So they could justify it. They could justify it and also create a future generation of people that will buy this product, you know. In Japan, like Everyone's family ate whale meat. After World War II, they were dependent on anything they could eat. And, you know, historically, they are a whaling nation. And if you go to Japan, it's very mountainous. They have a trouble. That's why, like, all cattle, all beef from Japan is exported, for, imported from Australia. You can't really, there's no place in Japan to grow cattle. So they're dependent on the outside world for their food. They're an island, and they're the, I think, fourth largest economy in the world. Yet they're, for their food, they're completely dependent on the outside world. And so they're very cautious if, like, one cow gets mad cow disease. It's like they stop all imports into Japan. They shut it down. Same bird flu, same thing. They're dependent on China for, for poultry. But the reality is in Japan, like, 90% of people eat some sort of seafood 90% of the time. They eat everything, jellyfish, fish. I mean, when you get breakfast there, you'll get 10 different bowls. You open one, there's eyeballs. And I mean, just all sorts of stuff going on. That's just that culture there. And so if it turned out that the seafood is not safe to eat and there's mercury, that country's in real trouble. They've now got a food crisis going on there because now they're completely dependent on the outside world for food. They can't sustain themselves. And so that's why the government there is so careful about 
how to approach this because there's definitely a problem going on in Taiji. The, 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 we were testing the meat. All the meat is toxic. People are eating that meat. There's no mm -hmm. warning labels on it. Pregnant women are eating it. Old people are eating it. Um, but I think the second the government admits there's a problem, it opens up liability that these people can now sue the government. Everybody could sue the government in Japan, potentially. So it's a Pandora's box that we've started with this mercury issue. They're not no. like the U.S. that can have their own cows and they can just cut themselves off from the world and do their own thing. Like they're dependent on the rest of the world for food, if, especially if their seafood's not safe, which is what they eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Aren't they also one of the biggest seafood exporters? Probably. Um, and, that and it's not necessarily caught there. For instance, like tuna. Like the tuna you buy at your store or you go to a sushi restaurant and there's tuna there. That tuna might have been in caught in Argentina two weeks before. And then it was shipped to Japan where it goes through the tuna auction. And then mm -hmm. from that tuna auction, it was shipped to a seller, a buyer in the States. So it's, it, you know, even though Japan may have not caught that tuna, a lot of the fish goes through to Japan before it goes anywhere in the world. That's where they have the big seafood auctions. Interesting. They, they control those markets.